Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, and joining me are Mr. Kahai, the legend for again. See what's up, Kahai? What's up? And Mr. Aaron, <laughs> the voice, Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron? What's up? All right, so Thursday Live, we usually have guests and stuff, but we have a lot of business to take care of today. So we're like, no guests, no, Jake, stay home, Jake. You know, we don't need to come or I guess. <laughs> <You're> like, no. <laughs> No, uh, who's another? Who's, who's a Tom Holland? <laughs> no, Tom Holland. No, Steve Vai. We don't need a guest this week, you know? <laughs> no, Ota san. Just please, just all right. We want to do our thing this week. We don't need you. We don't need now. <laughs> we need everyone. <laughs> no, James Hill, please. Just you know what? You don't have to go on our Zoom today. <laughs> so you know i i turned down many many celebrity names you know to to be here today because i just wanted to keep this just kick it with me and my friends you know aaron and kahaya today just you know just a nice trio like how we normally do even mike was like hey dude can i get on it's like mike if if i told if i told robert downey jr not to come to our, our <laughs> podcast you know and he's at least twice as handsome as you are (laughs) 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 nah just joking i love everyone um but we do have a lot of stuff to take care of today so um you know we want to set a new uh you know a new challenge for our uh, thursday live lesson song challenge we have a bunch of um uh like student reviews that we have to get through because i know a bunch of you guys are like hey when are you gonna review my video today is the day that we're going to review your video all right and you know i just kind of want to chat it up just uh trio style for now so how this works is we get questions from all over the place our emails our texts our live chats right now um you know anyway we can get these questions we'll try to answer them as best as we can i'll try to answer them as best i can these two guys are going to come in with their two cents and make up a super answer just for you okay so we are live this is thursday live lesson so make sure you uh utilize the chat chat it up let us know if you guys have a question um if you have a new question you can ask it. if you have a question about the question or anything that we're doing or anything we're talking about don't be afraid hit that up we also have a voicemail if you guys want to voicemail it up you know and uh if you guys want to hear your voice on the pod you can totally do that what is the voicemail address kahai <laughs> uh, <laughs> we gotta look it up. <laughs> uh, there is, there is. Don't worry about. It. We'll we'll have it on the uh, on the page. How about that? So on the page, <laughs> you guys watch or download this from. We'll have it on the page if you guys want to hear your voice here. Um, which actually brings me to to a point. What if you know we hold um we hold the live lesson challenge right? Uh, the the songwriting challenge, and the person who wins, you know, we can invite to our uh, you know to our live lesson uh, zoom room and then yeah. have them talk about the song that they wrote how about that yeah if, if the yeah. if they're comfortable like with that yeah yeah definitely if they're yeah, if they're cool of course yeah. if they're cool with it that's something you know they, they can kind of chat it up with us it'd be a nice little uh, us like sending them stuff that they'll eat or whatever you know mm-hmm. whatever it is that we send them um instead they'll you know they'll be a nice they, they can join the ranks of one mike odo <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be it'll be cool and i think it'd be nice to get, kind of get to know our audience and just kind of invite an audience over to our, our show as well so we'll try to do something like that okay well i uh, will take care of that at the end of the show we'll talk about the brand new live lesson challenge but for now give me the first question hi uh this was a question from last week and so last okay. week when we had Brad on, right, uh, mm-hmm. he, uh, we were talking about how, like, playing along to a song should be, like, easy and you shouldn't have to worry about stuff. And so when we mm-hmm. were talking about that, Kevin said, uh, I can whistle to anything without thinking. Do you eventually get to a mm-hmm. point where playing ukulele is like that? So, Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like, uh, maybe not as simple as whistling because whistling is just you just have to kind of match the pitch where it's just kind of the same thing here, but then we're dealing with cores we're dealing with multiple pitches at the same time so you might be able to kind of feel it out and pick you know like certain melody lines and notes but then uh strumming is uh strumming a chord is going to be uh, a different story but it will get you know to a point where it's as easy as uh, as kind of getting to getting to that point where like uh just you whistle or you just get it you know like um, if you're familiar enough with your scales, if you're someone like we were just talking about Abe um, Lagrimus Jr., if you're someone like Abe who is very, very, very knowledgeable with you know with every single possible way that the chord can go to, 
then uh, then it does become easy. So there's a there's a um, a certain level where you can reach where it gets easy to know what's going to come up next, and you can kind of strum along, and just like how you would with uh, with with whistling. Um, but it does take a lot of that, you know, um, a lot of knowledge, not so much uh, as just kind of playing where you can, you know, just kind of feel yourself out. But uh, getting to that point takes a lot of like skill and knowledge at the same time, not just kind of, you know, playing like how you would with the well, with, with whistling. But I don't know. I mean, <clears throat> for the most part, you can do that already with just your right hand. If you're not worried about chords or notes and stuff, you can, to you know, you can totally kind of quote unquote whistle along with your right hand to you know to the song like how i talked about it a lot either last week or the week before you can listen to your favorite tunes just like um mute the left you know uh, the left side of your ukulele so that you're not playing chords and just kind of you know uh, follow the rhythm something like that will be super easy and it will kind of seem like you're just whistling along to you know to something and i'm just trying to figure out things it's comparable to like whistling along cat right hand left hand stuff will come there will be, you know, there will be a certain level you can do that. And but definitely right hand you can do it right now. How about you yeah. guys? Yeah, I, I think yeah. um this was this was asked after like uh Pete asked, like, you know, he said like, Oh, I, I, I tried to play along, but it feels like I just start tumbling down the hill. Yeah. The and, video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And last week, like I wanted to add, but I we we kinda just kept going. I wanted to add that like actually like um probably professionals and people who you think are really good they I, I or at least i do like you know anyways like i'll, I'll be playing along and then i'll kind of stumble a little bit and i'm like oh no oops i gotta get back on the horse but i think we're like more adept at making it seem like oh nothing nothing to see here it was all planned all along right or like you know <laughs> we, we can make it seem smooth where it's you don't really notice it so it even even when you get better or even people who are better at playing they still that still happens to everybody like everybody trips up every once in a while you know there's just like a, a chord or something that hits them that's like oh that's weird i don't usually play that and you kind of just stumble a little bit but the main point is like getting back on jumping on and making sure you don't just like stop altogether. yeah i think that's the thing. right i mean we just with just the basic knowledge of, uh, of of scales and like kind of the the, co the chord family within the scale, you uh, we we came up you know with, with a ukulele challenge video where I was just kind of in the car and I was playing along with you know with, with the tracks that was kind of coming up and stuff. So with just that basic knowledge of uh, of, of scales and and and, uh, and music theory, you can totally do something like that. Like that's very attainable. You know, what do you think, Aaron? Um. Yeah, so if you can whistle, it to me that that means that you know that the next note is it either going to be it. higher or lower. Mm. And so, like, if you're just picking out like single notes on your ukulele, then you can do something really similar. Mm. And then, if you just pick a certain uh, key and you know that scale, it's even easier, you know. So if you if you know the melody of the song in your head. And you know, like, you know, you start on a certain note and you know that the next note is like a little bit higher or a lot higher, then you can kind of just go, go up to the next note in the scale or the, the note after that. And it's probably one of those, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I think when I started, I knew maybe three or four chords, but <laughs> I just played it, played just because I was familiar with piano and just picking stuff off uh, on piano it's very similar you know for ukulele if you're just picking single notes and so like i had a ton of fun really really early on just picking out melodies on my fretboard just single notes and you know you can do that for a long time and just you know have fun with that so that's that's very similar to whistling i i think so if you already have that skill then you know that's something that you probably have access to like now immediately you just start yeah. using it if your if your ear is that good, you know you can recognize yeah. pitch and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I I think and, that, and I mean that's that's kind of what it seems like. If you can whistle without really thinking about it, you're just doing it by feel. And so the ukulele is very similar in that same sense, where the higher notes are higher up the fretboard and lower notes are lower. So if you just <laughs> you know just do what how you feel like you know w with whistling, you're like pursing your lips more for the higher notes and like relaxing them for the lower. 
So if you already kind of have that intuitive feel for melody, then just do that with your ukulele already. Just start playing around with it and have fun. Mm-hmm. I I think that can even lead to a uh, harmony too, right? Where you'll be like playing a lead mm-hmm. or playing a melody and then you like realize oh it, there's a lot of like i'm pl- picking a lot of c right here like right in this time maybe the c chord is like the backing chord for that you know and so you try it out and you, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of there's a lot of chords that you see but you're you know if you're playing along to a simple song your bet is like that's pretty safe. Like you're more than likely to get that or get like, you know, at least you're in the a relative major or minor chord. So yeah, it's like, it's always, I think that's, that is like a skill that people don't practice enough. And it's a skill that's super useful for actually playing music is like being able to hear a note or chord and recognize it, or like at least kind of feel along your, your instrument, like where it might be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next question. <laughs> uh, so we don't have uh, any more questions, but then we did have a uh, few student reviews, right? So. Yeah. 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 So I have them in front of me right now. You know, it's it's been it's been a while. <laughs> so just in case I need to kind of like rewatch something again, um, I I have it here. But for the first one, we have um, Ben Ben Holding. Uh, no, ben it's Will. The first one. Oh, yeah. oh, Ben is so, Ben. Ben Hogan ben is like Hogan his is... username. So, mm-hmm. and I think it's like um, kind of watching it now. He's playing it at a, like a church or something. Uh, I think it's. It seems like he has an audience. or no. No, I, I think it's at his house. <laughs> like he's playing like surf. He's oh, trying yeah. to play surf, right? Hmm. Okay, yeah. well, my uh, my advice to you know to, uh, to is that when he's when he's strumming his, uh, his ukulele, he's actually not hitting like, all the strings, especially in the up strum. He t- he tries to just kind of like he strums like this, where he's kind of hitting the bottom two strings. And and my advice would be kind of to follow through. I mean, like with, with the uh, the way that we teach things here on ukulele underground is kind of. A, um, the the form is the point yourself, point down to the ground. So if you're doing this, you're definitely not doing the uh, the form that that we were talking about here. You know, on on the site, it's kind of just like follow through, play all you know, play all four strings. And um, there are some times where it's okay to kind of just hit half. But then if you're doing that, make sure that you do hit you know hit the rest of the strings or hit all the strings on some of the beats so that it it kind of uh it creates a nice little uh phrasing effect you know where there's like some uh some notes or some chords are um you know have have a what was that i'm trying to think of the word it's like the graded inside or the graded inside it's a uh, accent there it is <laughs> like some uh some chords have an accent so for example if i'm strumming something like uh that's just being just that kind of half strum to create different accents you can do instead of just going you can do I'm kind of strumming half here which we have to kind of um follow through with uh, with the entire strum just kind of watching him play he, he tends to just kind of like stay here and almost and same thing he's kind of like locking the hand he doesn't follow through with his you know with his wrist he kind of just does uh, does this so follow through that's that's that would be my advice what do you think Kahai? uh yeah yeah that's like something and something i think will be a reoccurring theme for a lot of these guys mm-hmm. is that it seems like they're locking their wrist position in one place yeah. And they're yeah. using more of their fingers to kind of try and strum, yeah. but yeah. it's I don't know it's it's it makes for kind of a stilted either strumming or picking where if you mm. try to like use your wrist more it should be I don't know easier or right, like because if Go ahead. yeah yeah oh no it, that's all I was gonna say it, it sounds I think it sounds more like flowy it sounds more uh, it mm-hmm. sounds more like you're you're playing and you're you're having an easier time playing than just going like more robotic mm. right 
Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, to to Kahai's point, like if you kind of lock it in here, a lot and a lot of people strum like this. You know, with like taking their thumb here and just kind of like doing this, and kind of strumming like that. But it just doesn't let you have that same like follow through as as if you just kind of let you know let off of uh, just kind of like, like resting your your thumb like at, at the top because so, you you get this very thin sounding you know sounding attack to your uh, to your hits so instead of like kind of locking the thumb and, and strumming this way that's what you'll get you know like instead of getting the full. You know, you want that full follow through. Yeah. yeah, I think it's good. Like he's he's actually trying not to um, use his arm mm -hmm. too. Yeah, so but that's that's instead, good. Yeah, yeah. In in that sense, it's really good. Like you're not yeah. you're not using your forearm to really move. Mm -hmm. You're you're mm -hmm. kind of using um, more of just your hand. But mm -hmm. but yeah, loosen up that wrist and then use. Um, more of a fuller range of motion and then i mm -hmm. think it'll it'll sound even better mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah okay because will will has been kind of working on this for a while right 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 mm -hmm. it's uh i mean i mean like like you said it's right to not move this up and down but it, it, it won't move if the if you do what you're doing with your thumb to kind of like you know to, to rest it on here if you do that with your with your forearm instead yeah you that's your where your anchor should be your, exactly you know, instead of resting your, uh, you know, or anchoring with your thumb and doing this, anchor with your forearm instead and do and do that. So imagine mm -hmm. your your wrist as your pointer finger because you, you yeah. kind of got it. You know, you you've got the kind of rhythm and you you want to do you, know, you want to do the strum. But if you imagine your wrist instead as your pointer finger and you're doing that, that will sound way better. I think so. Yeah. So will like the I think the reason why his username is Ben Hogan. Is because that's like a famous <laughs> golfer that he looks up to or something, and he oh. like studies. Mm -hmm. So to kind of put it in like the terms of like golf or like physical sports, right? It's like if you're golfing, oh, it's like if go. you here just go, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it's like if you just use just your arms to like you know hit the ball. It's mm -hmm. like you can kind of do it, but then when you really have to, if you watch professional golfers they use their full body they twist their full body back mm -hmm. and to get those really long drives right and i'm sure like for for you Aldrin, right like uh the, the same can be said for tennis too right like in tennis you don't just like stay yeah. in one place and then just swing your arm like for use your forearm for it you have to put your like most of your body into it to get like a good swing so yeah i think the same thing can be said like like with you know, yeah yeah uh, go ahead. Sorry, uh, I was gonna say that with with ping pong, uh, with with ping pong, is this with the with the wrist and stuff? But with tennis, it's the whole like body with the arm and the, and the movement. It's the same thing. So like if you know if you already got that kind of um, that motion, you can do the same thing with your you know with your wrist with the same kind of motion. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> so Jim, Jim in the chat said. So just like, using your fingers would be just like only using your arms. And then the kind of the correct form would be like you know your classic golfer swing, but mm. you're you're moving your entire hand. Yeah. And then um, if you're moving your entire forearm in order to strum, that's kind of like the happy Gilmore yeah, way. Yeah. You're moving your whole body towards the, <laughs> two the, the ball yeah. in order to make it go forward. The hockey hit. Yeah. Come on, guys. Tell me you've never tried that. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, um mm -hmm. so so all right go ahead guy next up oh well, like uh jim in the chat he said like uh you answered my question for the night i heard that half strum from is in over the rainbow and even in uh someone to lava right um and yeah that that mm -hmm. th there are times where you can use that kind of strumming thing but then you mm -hmm. it's just like one tool in your tool bag that you might want to use for some some instances not for and especially for like songs like surf right you really want to get that full strum because mm -hmm. it is like a strumming song mm -hmm. yeah right yeah. right right yeah and, and then a lot of times the half strum is like the the strings two strings that are closest to you instead of the mm -hmm. two the bottom strings mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. the two bottom strings like a half strum like that is usually used more in reggae on the up mm -hmm. strum Mm -hmm. so yeah 
yeah so the half strum usually it, if it's on like the one um you're do, you're doing it on the top two strings or the you know the right. g g and c strings instead of the e yeah. and a I mean, it's it's like the same kind of. Uh, I, was, I was talking about like the the movement, since you you know they kind of know the movement to hit two strings, but then hitting these two strings instead. But it's the same yeah. kind of like flick of the wrist, you know, or flick of the pointer finger anyway. Yeah. So you're kind of doing this flick, and then follow through, flick, follow through. That's it without the pinky notes in there. So if you want to play reggae, that's kind of one of those. Things. And it doesn't even have to be reggae. It's it's applicable to a bunch of different uh, uh, strumming. Yeah. And, and even when you're doing that, right, like that type of half strum, you're still using your wrist a mm-hmm. little bit and you're still using your forearm a little, a little bit too. So, yeah, yeah I, I, yeah. I think it you can hear when you're you're you know you're locking your arm in place there is like a difference in the mm-hmm. the swing of the sound you know so yeah mm-hmm. um you want to go over to uh wesley's okay. good interview yeah yes 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 i do okay so with that with wesley's uh student review like you said it's basically going to be the same you know uh the same kind of theme where like he's he's really like locking it in and he's kind of you know like playing this way but the thing with wesley's video is that uh he's playing like an eight string like ukulele or is it a, i think it's an eight string or eight mm-hmm. or ten string something like that yeah it's an eight string ukulele that you know that he's trying to play here comes the uh, here comes the sun with um he's getting a very very thin attack on it um and I, i'm trying to figure out why and it's it's because uh, I'm thinking it's because of that, the way that he's kind of striking his uh, his string going up. He is, you know, um, like anchoring his thumb doing this, and he's kind of doing this kind of hit as well. But with the eight string, because you got two strings um, you know, in, in in the same spot, if you're kind of plucking up, you want to be you don't want to be plucking up this way, where it's like uh, you want to be plucking up here, like through. You still want to follow through. Because um, if you're plucking up like this, you have more of a tendency to just hit one string or hit one string and the other string not getting the same kind of uh, um, the same kind of attack. You want the, the attack to be the same on both strings if you're going to play a multi-string uh, ukulele or like an eight-string ukulele. So you know, make sure to follow through. So this is not that much of a problem with with that one, but. Um, really following through. It's the same thing. Follow through, but this time instead of kind of like, uh, how would I explain? This is like uh, instead of scratching up, you want to sca- scratch through, almost to like so, or like a restroom instead of out. Yeah, yeah. It's that, that's it. Up instead of out. Kind of like a restroom going to the E string instead of just a free stroke going up. So it's on, think of it like a restroom <laughs> going up instead of uh, out. So that you know that gives you a more even attack on both strings at the same time if you follow through. So uh, I, I feel like he's getting that. Also, you know, um, him and the video, you know, that we're gonna talk about afterwards. Because you're kind of resting your 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 thumb here, you're kind of relying on just your finger strength, you know, getting uh, getting the hit. But if you if you um, anchor with the pinky finger. It's it's more your fingers and your hand strength because it's like closing your hand like you know like this or closing your fists like so when you when you're making that you know when you're making that hit and you have your thumb kind of doing a down you know a, a down stroke on some of the strings as well instead of just all up strokes with your you know with your finger it's a totally different tone you know um, so I would suggest instead of uh, Taking out your thumb by just you know like resting your thumb up here and doing the uh, you know doing the, the picking pan with your pointer and middle and ring finger, I would say use you know use the pinky finger to anchor and use your three or four fingers whatever you know whatever it is that you want to do. And I know we keep preaching to just do three instead of four because your ring finger is so weak to just like to be left to do the uh, to to do the A string, but. You know, I mean, although we preach it that way, people can still do whatever they want to do. But if you're going to do it, you know, like uh, if you're going to do it your way, if you can do it like that with the ring finger, make sure that, you know, you're planting it with your pinky instead of your thumb. Because even more so, if I'm using my ring finger here while planting my thumb, it's even weaker. 
than than it is if I use my pinky finger to uh to to plant it down or to anchor it down. It's um I feel like that's the biggest part of what what he's doing. I, I mean, and he he sh like kind of shows his hands too. I don't know what that was uh, what that was. About. Do you know what that was about, Kai? He might have been like just trying to get the camera to focus. Uh, that's what oh, I was okay, guessing. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't like, think it was. Uh, he anything. didn't say anything. He's just kind of doing this. I'm like, yeah. is he showing me something in his hands? Yes, yeah, like calluses. Like what's no, going yeah, on? I think okay. he was. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I was trying to get confused. the camera, the webcam to focus. Oh or, yeah. Or it might have been he. He had planned to cut out that stuff. Oh, I see. The see, stuff see, beforehand. See. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, that's kind of what you know what I'm hearing. It's a very weak hit. You know, if if you're doing a free stroke on those think of it more as a restro if you are going to do that and um you know we we don't want to discourage people from trying new things so if that is if you're really set on like um planting your thumb or anchoring your thumb and then playing that way at least play it with a um uh, a restro so that you're following through and you're hearing the, the full value of that note okay what yep. you guys uh something i noticed with him That's is pretty much yeah ditto <laughs> <laughs> Uh, something I noticed, though, it's uh, and this is a hard thing, and we we tell it to so many people, is like, kids, uh, and it can be you know like when people record themselves or when they're they're trying to play it, they get nervous, so mm -hmm. it doesn't sound exactly like how they would play if they're more calm, you know. But it just like the phrasing in that song, it like there's parts where it sounds like when he's switching from like a picking to like you know strumming through a chord or something there's just like a brief pause and mm. breaks in between and it doesn't sound like the song is like flowing all the way through you know it, instead of like here comes the sun it sounds mm. like here comes the sun you know so like i, I would just say like mm. well, and yeah, that, that certain, yeah yeah and th that song especially is, is a little hard because like i think they recorded it in like a weird tuning rate like or they didn't tune it exactly right so it's hard to play along with it but if you can like try to have that freeze in your head like that have that sound in your head so what you're really doing when you're playing is just recreating the song you know like have it playing in your head while mm -hmm. you're playing along to it basically and and yeah like mm -hmm. just yep. you know try to smooth it out a little bit but that's that's really like i think you're gonna get that anyways um and that's kind of just something you might want to focus on i guess or think about while you're playing yeah. yeah and i think we talked to wesley a lot about like phrasing like already because mm -hmm. uh, he's i believe in the past like how many months of us doing like student reviews wesley has come up uh, kind of a lot and mm -hmm. um you know it, phrasing is is something that you know some people take a long time to kind of grasp and uh, take a long time to 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 get better at because it's not something that you you know you can take a lesson on or like or somebody can give you an advice and you're like oh it just that's that's it right there. it's kind of your own thing you know it's it's your own kind of uh internal rhythm or your own like kind of like judgment of how you how long you want the note to go or how soft or how loud you want the note to go so for mm -hmm. something like uh when i play it when i play that song just like Kahai said, I think about, you know, I think of the song in my head as if like my ukulele is singing those. And uh, when someone is singing, they do have highs and lows, you know, they do have loud and soft and they do, you know, have long and short. All those things matter in phrasing. So if, if I played it just straight, it would sound like... You know that would be no phrasing that would be just kind of like here comes the sun do 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 here comes the sun little darling like that's just kind of what it sounds like there's just no like no phrasing to it or if somebody were to talk without you know without commas or periods or even like emphasis on some words it would just kind of sound like this if i'm just kind of talking out loud like so that's what it sounds like but instead you want to be able to phrase it which is So there are some notes that are soft. There's some notes that are that is loud. I'm holding some a lot longer. I'm cutting some, you know, a lot shorter. It really the, each note is going to matter, and it's tough. You know, it's it, it's um it's not easy, especially for you know for some people who like don't quite like 
uh, grasp the um, the concept of of phrasing it, it's it's tough to you know to just uh, to to execute it if if you don't exactly know what you know what it is. But phrasing is is a huge deal also that'll make I, that sound a lot better. Yeah, yeah, and I've heard like it's like people. That's another thing that people don't train or really think about training when they're trying to play music is like that inner your inner ear right your like uh your the your imagination of what you're trying to imagine the music as being as yeah. so like mm-hmm. uh a way to train this and i've heard like or somebody uh jacob collier in like one of his lectures he asked like his professor like how do i get better at writing melodies and his professor just told him like jacob imagine like a beautiful lady is singing to you and he, so he's like okay and he started playing the piano and when he could imagine somebody like actually singing it's like he said that that made his phrasing and his melodies a lot more interesting you know so like the same thing i think and i think Mm -hmm. um wesley might be having a hard time because he's also like singing as the same time as he's playing so you know like and that's Mm -hmm. actually that's good that he's practicing that but if he wants to get better at phrasing on ukulele he might want to put down the singing and then just think about like imagine in its head like what it should sound like and then like try and play yeah. along to that you know and, and like yeah like i think i mean if yeah or uh, you go ahead i said if you're if you're singing you know like that kind of gives you an idea of what the ukulele should be doing you know like uh um i, I was going to comment on like on the specific words so with that song like if you're saying little you know little darling like just that just that phrase like little darling like the word uh and the word darling dar is definitely a a lot more accented than ling is so but if you know if you're just looking at them as notes those two notes look exactly the same but in that phrase dar is more accented than ling so little even little like little like there's a there's an accent on lit uh accent on lit and tol darling little darling it seems that so there is there is a certain like uh, you know uh, way to phrase that. But if you're playing your ukulele, it's tough to kind of hear that you know um, that that phrase if if you don't sing it or if you don't hear it or if you don't play you know with uh, play along with with the actual tune and stuff. So you could just hear it as if I'm playing it like that. There's no like you know there's no distinction of where little and darling is. But if you play it with uh, with with phrasing. That's like where you know where it, it kind of comes a lot live a little bit more. Whereas I'm hitting the first note a little bit louder, and then I'm hitting the second note like little darling. So that, so. and those are stuff that it's not you're not gonna see it on the uh, you know on, on the piece of paper unless you're reading you know a full arrangement with the you know with a greater than symbol or less than symbol you know, on the bottom of the note and stuff like that's when you kind of like okay i guess this needs to be accented a little bit more but it's stuff if you're just reading like like tabs you know maybe or or, or even like somebody that you know that just kind of wrote out the score but didn't really write out the, um, the the phrasing for it so that's very important and then on top of that you have an underlying like getting louder and softer like um all together because little darling because it's it'll get loud you know and that makes for much better phrasing as well if you're kind of you have this underlying like kind of growing back and then going soft and growing again and then within that you have the accents you know in there it's it's really 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 tough yeah there's a lot of like little nuances that you know that most people kind of just pay attention to or really focus on i i think um and i think it's it's tough too right because it, it's like you said like it's not something that you can just learn and it's almost like you have to learn for mm. every song like you have to learn what every song mm. calls for or needs right because yeah. it's not going to be the same for every song it's mm-hmm. not going to be like okay on beat three i have to accent now or i have to play louder it's like it all depends on what the song is trying yeah. to say too so yeah it is it is mm. tough it is tough to learn yeah and it 
And some of those are not really set in stone. It also depends on how you want to, you know, uh, how you want to phrase it. So if you don't necessarily want to phrase it like, you know, like the Beatles and stuff, you can phrase it a, a completely different way. Um, so that's, it's not something that, you know, like, oh, this is how it's written or whatever. And that's how you should play it. You can also phrase it like your, you know, your own way. So something like Little Darling, uh, let's see if I were to do that. So instead of, uh, instead of the accents on, uh, on the, on lit and dar, I maybe add the accent to little darling, you know, like little darling. Oh. So something like that, you know, where it's really, really subtle differences. Oh. It's, it's the way that you want to present the song or the way that you want to say that phrase. Sometimes, um, you know, putting, putting the emphasis, this is on, on certain things completely change the message of the song, you know? So it depends on what you want to do. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's go. Next up. Uh, the next one is the, or the next review we have is from Pete, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. So with Pete, same thing. I mean, but it, it, he's kind of locking, you know, like he's locking his hands and kind of uh, doing this, this up, you know, this up pick or with the pointer and middle finger, same thing. Um, but the thing with, uh, with, with Pete's, he's really picking down here. He's getting an even thinner tone. So this is already kind of a thin tone if you're doing free strokes, you know? Uh, and it's made even thinner if you're kind of hitting it down here. Because, uh, I mean, I, I, I watched, I watched the uh, student review and he barely used his thumb there. And I mean... Uh, I'm gonna say this again. You know, with with uh, with the pinky finger going down here, that has you know, you can utilize your thumb, and your thumb is the like the strongest of of your uh, you know of your fingers, or at least the the most like well balanced tone. So I would you know I would use my thumb for say bass notes or any note that I want to kind of uh, stand out, or any note that I want. Um, underneath everything and that's why you would use it for bass because this would have a nice long hit while the you know the other fingers are kind of playing on top of what you lay down with the thumb so i lean down with the thumb on the c <laughs> i don't know what that, that how to do that that <laughs> riff but um it's kind of like that so i you know i would not like be reserved in using my thumb i'll just use it straight out like if, if i'm going to play, play my c string if i have a low g especially i'm going to be using that uh, you know you betcha i'm going to use that that thumb to play that low c and g um but he's kind of playing this you know this way and he's hitting the c with his pointer finger he's doing it like that and he's kind of like doing free strokes um free strokes are fine um, that, you know there's a reason why free strokes exist but in, in this case, I think rest stroke would be a better approach. It gives you a little bit better tone. Um, if you move your hand from down here to over here, the tone will get a lot better because it sounds really thin right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, uh, what I noticed of his video is it seems like he either came from uh, like he plays guitar or he's mm -hmm. like he saw somebody who plays guitar because even how he holds the uke right where he keeps oh, yeah, the like bow this. yeah yeah mm -hmm. about like in between his legs that's mm, something that you would see more with like classical guitars or acoustic mm -hmm. guitars because you you keep that there and then you you point the neck up and it's such a big instrument that you kind of need that extra space but the ukulele is so mm -hmm. small that you really should like have it you know like up like on your lap or like up tucked underneath your forearm and you don't need to like do that whole i don't know like pointing it at that that sharp of an angle where it's in between your legs you know um mm -hmm. and then like the other thing i saw too is like it seems like instead of um anchoring with his thumb or his pinky he's like putting his palm down and he's laying his palm like yeah. flat and kind of yeah. keeping it yeah and i i yeah, guess yeah that's okay but that just seems like um that's what causes carpal tunnel right is like you putting your your bending your wrist like that so really like i think a better way is mm. to 
bend it the opposite way or like have it like where it's bent outwards and bent inwards if that makes any sense mm. yep yeah and i mean he's only been playing we said like a couple months or something so there's mm. there's a lot of you know room for improvement definitely but uh he's you know he, he, his left hand looks good <laughs> the mm. left hand looks great like the way that he's uh fretting you know fretting the nose the way he's holding the instrument you know on, on the left hand looks like how you should do it but it's just the right hand that needs work mm-hmm yeah, I, and I think he said that he's playing, learning from a music book, so it mm. it sounds kind of like he's learning for from a music book, which is fine. But he might want to yeah. start learning from you know uh, songs that he can like listen to and like learn to play mm. along with the songs because you just you learn mm. little things that you don't really they don't really teach you in music books, you know? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, so the music book that he's using is uh, is Jeff Peterson, which is actually a great. Um, he, he's a great uh, guitar player. You know, he's a. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never. I think he plays ukuleles. I mean, I'm sure he plays ukulele as well. But uh, yeah. he does like slacky guitar. Um, amazing, amazing player. He's like Nahoku winner, whatever. You know, like he's mm-hmm. got the accolades. But you know, being a classical and uh, and um, slacky guitarist, he does kind of play like that. And I think that's what. Pete is kind of, you know, like emulating is the way that like Jeff Peterson played, you know, mm-hmm. but ukulele is going to be a completely different approach than how, you know, how Jeff plays the, uh, uh, the guitar. Yeah. Especially if you want the tone to be, you know, to, to be there. Yeah. I, I guess it's like not bad if you're trying to recreate that guitar style of playing, but yeah. that's not what you would see in most of ukulele playing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jim just said, like, so Jim is uh, earlier when we were talking about uh, Here Comes the Sun, he said that, like, oh, yeah, it's uh, like a complex chart, music chart for, like, what sounds like mm. a simple song. Like, there's a lot going on in it musically. Mm. And then he right now he just said uh, charts show the roadway, but not how to travel it. I think that's like, yeah, that's a pretty good yeah, analogy. That's a good way of putting it. Mm. Yeah. It's like yeah, there's especially that riff. It goes, but if you just played it like normal, um, which sounds fine, but if you're adding those accents, it really makes a big difference. Yep. Yeah. And I think that I kind of phrased that first one too. I just I can't turn it off now. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When it's like so iconic, it's hard to like think of it mm-hmm. in a different way. Yeah, like you have to almost switch mm-hmm. how your brain thinks. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's uh, definitely acts, and there's some obvious ones too, just like that, like the ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da 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 da. We should teach that song. I mm-hmm. think that song's popular. Kai. I think people like <laughs> it if you talk that. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be popular. I think people would dig it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Um. Next. Well, I think that was all we had for our student reviews and okay. questions and everything. So yeah. Yeah. Right on. Okay. So let's uh, spend the last fifteen minutes, um, you know, talking about uh, the the song the song challenge. So here on Ukulele on the Grounds Thursday Live Lesson, we uh, we do a song writing challenge, and what that is is we challenge you guys to write a song. We basically give you the key. And some guidelines on how to, you know, on what to write your song with. But pretty much anything goes as long as we're just trying to encourage people to write more, use their ukulele more, and to be creative and have an outlet. Especially in times like, you know, like now, we want to be creative. We want to have an outlet to kind of express some of the things that we're feeling inside. Right, Kahar? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Everybody, yeah? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So, um, this uh this time let's let's decide on what the key is what was the key last or the b flat or something was the key last time uh something i don't know it, it's been a so while so uh, yeah all right uh-huh. yeah let's let's let people in the in, in the chat kind of give us some ideas on what key they would like to do this challenge in so i challenge the chat to come up with something <laughs> yeah and then also then, uh, while we're doing that what oh, Oh yeah, like uh, uh, we in the chat we also take like genre suggestions and uh, mm-hmm. themes or other stuff too. Yeah, so yeah. just put it on anything. What what should we write about? What 
what the core progressions maybe you know that, that you guys want to do like is it a one four five is it a one six two five you want to do that you can do four five one two five one you can do a one seven four five perhaps that's a you know that's a pretty good support here. Uh, You know, one seven four five. I mean, whatever, whatever you guys want to do, I'm down with. Uh, I'm down with whatever you guys want. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, anybody? Uh, I think we gotta wait for the <laughs> chat to catch up. Yeah. I know there's a little lag. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, um, I, so I actually did wanna. Um, I don't know if maybe while we wait. Okay. I kind of wanted to mention um cuz cuz um Uncle Willie passed away recently. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, so yeah. just um um yeah, I don't know. You if you guys want to say something. Uh, yeah, I mean it was it was really sad. It was yesterday. So he passed away yesterday. He's had a long like battle with uh, with cancer. I know people are saying like oh two years, you know, it's been two years since he was battling and stuff, but we haven't gone to Nam in a while and he was already kind of like you know, not doing that well when we last saw him at the at the Nam show, and I remember um, going up to uh, like the Hawaii Music Supply guys' hotel room to like to record some uh, some videos for their website. And uh, Uncle Willie was with us, and I remember he was kind of walking with me um, and Uncle Joe Souza from uh, from Kanilea. And already, you know, he, he was he was kind of like you know, he was kind of weak. And um, and I think during you know during that time. Uh, I I kind of it, it was it's tough. I, I thought about this yesterday when we played because it was me, him, and Carly, and we jammed together. And I didn't even know that Uncle Willie K knew who I was. <laughs> so <laughs> when uh, you know, and we've met before and stuff. But I'm like small potatoes, you know. He knows guys like Steven Tyler. <laughs> like that's the kind of guys that he knows. So, um, and after we jammed and the stuff uh, at the Connie Leo booth, he kind of like so a dream. Like, you know, when, when are we going to make something together? I was like, what? It blew <laughs> my mind for him to just be like, you know, I'm like, man. And, and that's like when, you know, Uncle Joe and Lena is like, well, if you ask, you better do something. He's not doing that well. You know, like you better do something with him now. And it's one of those things that like, I didn't know how to get something like that started. Cause someone uh -huh. like Uncle Willie, especially, you know, during his last few years, he's been like so busy because he, he yeah just, he was still he was yeah. still playing the whole time playing. and he was doing like you know his uh his his treatments and whatnot so i didn't want to be like hey so i don't know if you remembered but, uh, <laughs> but you remember you you said you wanted to, like, God to, wanted do, to something do something to with yeah him. you know what i mean like and you don't just go i mean because he's very approachable like uncle willie mm -hmm. k is like a really cool dude very approachable i'm like super duper shame like to you know to just go up to some you know some some people just ask him for stuff, you know. But he asked me, "Is like, when are we gonna do something?" That was almost like an open invitation. So it's it's kind of a regret, but I don't want to think of it that way. Which is, I I just think of it because I was talking to my wife about this, and I just think of it as like, you know, I think it was cool that someone like him, you know, like would work with 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 someone like me. It was just kind of small potatoes compared to someone like Steven Tyler. But that's the kind of guy that he was, you know. He's he he sees something. And he's like, yeah, I enjoy this. I, he enjoyed playing with me and Carly, and he's like, let's all let's all do something. Everyone, let's let's go, go do something. He's just it's a great uh, great musician, and he's super like all around kind of musician. Like he can play everything from like opera to Hawaiian to country to rock. Like I've I've seen that guy jam out to every single genre that you could think of, you know. And um, we me and Aaron we did uh, a show here on Kauai, which is kind of like a it was a kind of a, like a Western theme, you know? Oh, it I, was um, it was the hold down for hope. It was like a it was. <laughs> cancer, yeah, kind of fundraiser. And it's like, why would they ask us to do this hold down? We're not like country at all. And then like Uncle Willie Kid goes up there and shows us how it's done. It's like, yeah, that he should have just played an extra hour, took our hour, <laughs> you know, and just rocked out the house. And that's he's he's so good. Like some of the best memories you know that, that i have is with uh, is with willie k and it's it's really sad to see him go you know he was he was a good uh you know, i consider him a mentor and a friend because you know he's he's just a, such a cool dude with, with very very big heart so mm -hmm. i'm gonna miss him yeah. <laughs> yeah so so um yeah i forget 
because it was was it yesterday that it yeah that i mean it, I, I that heard it was it announced it was, right yeah 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 so um so when i found out i like wanted to go find that drive and mm. just so happened that the day before i was looking through my drives i had mm. like a stack of drives mm. and i found one because i was trying to find um some footage from a long time ago mm. and so um when i found out about that mm. i i plugged in that one that i had used yesterday mm. plugged it straight into my computer and that was the drive from nam that oh, we had uh-huh. footage for you know yeah and it's so crazy so like i pulled up um you did like a kind of impromptu interview yeah with him and you were yeah. trying to kind of conduct a, a serious <laughs> interview but yeah. he kept like <laughs> you know making cracking jokes and all yeah. kinds of stuff yeah and, yeah and we and didn't even end up using it and so mm. um so like i i was gonna edit that down yeah. and just you yeah. know put put kind of like a blooper reel kind of thing together oh that's cool and, and put it on instagram or something mm-hmm. but um just as i was editing editing it mm-hmm. um the hard drive starts not connecting whoa yeah so it's like <laughs> it's like it disconnects mm-hmm. and then because like you know it's usb so it's like right. <sighs> plug it back in computer yeah. freezes and then like oh. you know yeah and so like oh. i for like seriously for like a couple hours i was trying mm-hmm. to just even get that file off mm-hmm. that drive mm-hmm. it, it it wouldn't go and so like oh, i was like snap. okay uncle willie you're <laughs> just messing with me right and so <laughs> it's kind of so like i just ended up just putting kind of like a screenshot like yeah, i yeah, got yeah. a screenshot on Instagram. from that from that uh one video that we did of him oh. doing it was like jewish hawaiian mm. you know mm. ukulele it's He's... like amazing he just he, he was just such a amazing mm. guy funny guy mm. um he 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 was a serious player but he could crack yeah. jokes like no yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's like it's always entertaining watching his shows just not for the song i mean yes for the songs that he plays but not just for that but like the things that he says mm. it's, like, it's yeah. hilarious yeah <laughs> yeah he is um yeah unbelievable person yeah yeah Yeah. one one of like the most like full like you know not only like musician but like really like headliner or like person who was you know like when they took the stage they they took the stage and they really you know killed their performance so yeah it's like and even Even, that that or or, uh, that that interview i i like i remember like us going up to him and you know it's like you said so we're small potatoes so we're like just like penguin walking up to him and being like can we can we like talk to you about the connie leas and he's like oh yeah no problem and he was like doing the interview with us you know and then afterwards like i told him like oh thank you for taking the time to do the interview he's like ah oh, yeah no problem guys no problem it was fun you know and after we did that yeah i mean uh or that that was the same time that uh I was I stayed with my sister after that nam and my sister guys mm-hmm. came back to Kauai and so she said that when they came back he was on the same plane and she was texting me oh. she's like oh my god Willie K is on the same plane as me he's sitting across from <laughs> me from the like the uh, like it wasn't in the plane but before they're boarding yeah. she was like he's right over there oh my god I'm freaking out and I was like oh you should go up to go up to him and say hi and you know and I was like oh you can say that like uh, oh my brother uh you know he works for Ukula Underground and he just did the interview with you or whatever and he'll probably you know know what you're talking about she's like yeah. no no i'm too scared i'm too scared <laughs> but it was like that yeah I, I was like really like oh no he's like super nice i'm sure he would be fine with you you know just saying like oh hey willie like i really like your music just wanted to let you know he was always like a, a really cool guy to just you know approach he was never like oh no i'm not i'm too busy don't bother me yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, i was gonna share like um we were doing the, I think it was a San Diego ukulele festival, and Willie K, you know, was was one of the names that uh, that was playing there, and um, and, and I think like someone was playing with like two other dudes were playing with him, right? Do you remember this, Darren? Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. thing is, like, he could have done that show and like just killed it by himself. <laughs> yeah. But then <laughs> he let the other two dudes 
basically run the you know run the show and he was just like in the background just kind of like picking picking his ukulele and kind of just jamming letting the other two guys sing and and featuring them and whatnot and it's like that is you know that is a really cool dude he's just like you know um these guys should get pushed because they're they're like the next mm-hmm. whatever you know like mm-hmm. up and coming mm-hmm. guys that's like the kind of guy that he was you know that he's, mm-hmm. he's willing to like elevate other people and if he knows he can rock the place or whatever but he doesn't have to like when other people can benefit you know mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. even yep. even super cool dude even with your your video with you and Carly and him playing together, right? Mm-hmm. He wasn't like the one who was like, "Oh, let's play this song and like yeah, let's play yeah, it in yeah. this key." Carly was like the one like, "Oh, you guys want to play this song and uh, <laughs> can you guys play it in this key?" You know, and wasn't what song was it where like afterwards he's like, "How do you even know this song?" Because uh, like Carly, yeah, Bula. yeah. Bula. yeah. it's like, on Connie Leia's. Um, youtube oh, channel YouTube. Yeah. yeah it's it's funny because it's that that, show, that song's kind of dirty <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, and and he it was like him and um, amy and amy, amy right yeah. like they they made that song <laughs> right <laughs> and so like like do you know this song yes he does know that, <laughs> that song <laughs> oh, that's that's cool yeah so he's the guitar player on that album that <laughs> uh yeah yeah <laughs> But really, he knows really the whole cool. backstory of that song, and yeah, he knows that yeah. Carly was too young to be singing <laughs> about everything yeah. in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's. I was thinking. I was like, you know, for like maybe, uh, maybe a month's lesson as a tribute. Like me and Carly should do that song. Like for you know for a lesson. Oh. I was like, oh, yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, she sang it well too. Yeah, mm-hmm. she yeah. she could definitely hit those Amy Hanayali's that notes. Uh-huh. That yeah, she's hitting so. Mm-hmm. All right. Do we have suggestions from the audience? Go uh, I think. Well, I think everybody, the people were talking about Uncle Willie okay. and mm. talking about stuff. So yeah, I, I think they were getting caught up in that too. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah. okay. Well, let's just let's just decide on a key. Um, I like the key of uh, D. How about we do something in D instead? And um. Mm-hmm. Let since we haven't done it in a while, let's do another one where it's just kind of an open key, like um, open progression. So you don't have to do a specific progression, um, as long as you're in the key of D. Very simple. Just write a song in the key of D. Now, as far as um, the suggestions goes, you can uh, let's see what genre should we pick. Hmm. How yeah. about so what? You guys have ideas? genre I, I can tell you so i looked up what we did last time and we did mm. like a key of b flat uh with yeah. like a waltzy genre so mm. yeah we can try something yeah, let's do how about since we were talking about uncle willie and um how about we do a country none of us are country music writers <laughs> <laughs> let's kind of challenge ourselves to write a country song in d uh-huh. for this challenge i think okay? Well, like, how about, like, and specifically, like, uh, you know, for everybody who's going to try the challenge, they can just do, like, straight country, whatever they think of as country. Yeah. Country. But, like, what if we make it, like, a little bit, like, oh. as an added, is, like, Uncle Willie, you know, Paniolo kind of country, like, mm. Hawaiian kind of mixed in country, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, Paniolo mm-hmm. music or country music. Paniolo, mm-hmm. by the way, it just means cowboys in, in Hawaiian. It's it's mm-hmm. a cowboy. Um, so yeah, so cowboy music or country music in D. I am very very scared for this, and I'm looking <laughs> forward to what Aaron has to write. <laughs> do we have a topic? Like, uh, do you want to? Oh, topic is let's see, trucks, <laughs> Nana, America troops. <laughs> <laughs> um, the country it's always like yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah imagine, jeans were painted on and some <laughs> beer and <laughs> imagine if it's a song Open used roads. for a super bowl commercial we need that <laughs> <laughs> okay how about that how about a um how about jingle let's let's create the, we've never done that so let's do a country song jingle for a product <laughs> either any product, product? Any pro- yeah, I was gonna say either product that's already that you know that that already exists or uh-huh. a made up product. Okay. So yeah, make a jingle. Oh, that's oh, this is gonna be fun now. <laughs> make a jingle <laughs> in country, like country music style jingle in D. 
there you go that's it yeah for, for product made or or made up or imaginary yeah pete, um, <laughs> pete was on the same wavelength because he said mention oh. dogs and pickups is like yeah yeah that would <laughs> be in it yeah. <laughs> there we've never done that i think before we've never done a jingle challenge so this one is a jingle and uh and the person and, and you guys can write songs put it on the uu plus forum just submit it in there we can check it out and talk about it and stuff and all the people who post in the uu plus forum you know well uh if you're comfortable with it we'll put your name in you know in in a hat basically we'll pull name out, out of a hat and um whoever we choose gets to be our mystery special guest yeah. for, uh, for a thursday live lesson so ours are due in two weeks so mm-hmm. not next for Thursday, but the Thursday afterwards, it's going to be due. And um, for you folks playing at home, it's due in three weeks, so the week after that. Because once we kind of show our songs, um, we hope it gives you guys kind of ideas on what to do. And you guys have another week on top of that to um, mm-hmm. excuse me, to finish up your songs. So, so that's so. Huh? Uh, so the the main challenge is that it's in the key of D, right? And then yeah, kind of the. Yeah, the cowboy stuff, that's all bonus if you like want yeah. it or if you need some ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do is just write a song in key of D. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Uh, jingle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jingle. The key of D odd oh, is gonna be fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's this this month's challenge. We usually do one of these a month. We haven't done one. Uh, we didn't do one last month, but we did one the month before. So this month's challenge, key of D. That's it. Yeah. Key of D. Bonuses are country music, paniola music, and jingle. Mm-hmm. Be good enough. That's not complicated with like, and then use seventh dominant whatever chord. No, <laughs> let's just keep it nice and simple. D, jingle, country. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to... God. <laughs> sometimes sometimes when it's like country music or whatever i'm like mm. uh i don't i can't do that i'm not even gonna try but i think i'm, <laughs> I'm really gonna give it like my my you know give it the old try this time yeah, give it the old try. <laughs> even though i didn't go to college give it the old college try go, the yeah. old community <laughs> college try <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> the old kcc C-C. try yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh to two different kccs <laughs> <laughs> still didn't get anything, <laughs> still didn't get anything. <laughs> uh, i went to uh i've seen the campus <laughs> it's a nice campus uh, but yeah, it's that's that's gonna be fun. I'm I'm looking forward to what Aaron writes. <laughs> no, yours too high, but definitely Aaron. <laughs> yeah, no, me too. Uh, me too. Yeah. I wanted to mention too. Um, I recently got a kind of a message on Instagram, and mm-hmm. it was or well, I saw that. Remember, we did a ukulele challenge on our YouTube. Um, for that Attack on Titan oh, yeah, 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 song, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the the kid who did that that original, I mean, cover of yeah. that that song, he he saw the video. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. That. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, out, so he shout out to him. He kind of messaged me and stuff, and it's uh, I've been kind of talking to him on that. But oh, yeah. that's that's pretty cool. He's like he he grew up. He's, oh, yeah? he's all grown up now. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's an adult in this in this coronavirus world <laughs> yeah, yeah no but uh but, what's his name let's, let's shout out to him uh kellen kellen yeah yes yeah. do you yeah. know his uh his youtube so i think it's uh ukulele uh well ukulele kenchan is his mm, youtube right, right? Yeah. and then it's like mm. ukulele ken 808 or something like that is his instagram we'll put it put a link do you yeah. know how old yeah. he is now? Now that you kind of talked to him and stuff, I'm not too sure, but yeah. um, but yeah, he, he actually lost a, he lost a lot of weight too mm. recently, and mm. so he I look, looks like it. a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He gave it to you. Yeah, yeah I found it. He lost it, and I'm like, hey, there it is. <laughs> but yeah, quarantine you know, yeah, snacks. I'm telling you. <laughs> so I think he's gonna start putting up more ukulele videos as well. So like, look yeah. out for him. He he does um. He, he did a great job then when yeah, he was young yeah, and now and he's yeah he's, he's uh, even better he's a uh, Aaron after he becomes a titan like when he turns back into a, a human <laughs> <laughs> you're the the Aaron after the titan <laughs> when he fights his way yeah 
<laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Kai. What is, what is that? <laughs> I'm not even the one who watches that show. I just know that much. Yeah, yeah. What show? So, yeah, <laughs> definitely check out the video and then check out his um yeah, his channel. videos too. He he mm-hmm. has some some great ukulele stuff cool on his jeans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to check that out because I remember seeing that video. I think that's the only video that I saw from him. But watch watching and learning that you know that arrangement, it was it was pretty impressive. Like there were some pretty tough lines in that arrangement. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good job, man! Shout out to you, <laughs> ukulele Ken Chan. Yep, keeping that keeping that. Uh, what you call the future of ukulele stars bright. <laughs> yeah. Do some more like a hard uh, anime song so we can challenge old dream some more. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> so we have more more songs to challenge old dream to. That's right. I haven't done an ukulele challenge in a long time because we yeah. we, we did the uh, the the Jake or young kid and I think before that was like a pizza party. Or what was the one before that? <laughs> mm-hmm. I think so. Oh yeah, no, that was te- that was Ninja, uh, Ninja Turtles. That was a fun one, actually. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. And I, I like the arrangement that I came up with with that one. It was <laughs> yeah, <fun. laughs> let's get fun. All right, guys. Well, that's it. We have uh, overstayed our welcome. <laughs> it is almost ten minutes after, but hey, we're having fun. That's that's basically what I wanted to do here. Have fun with my three friends. You know, I'm like Jake. Not not this week. Okay, James. Na- okay, <laughs> take care of your baby for now, James. Take care of your kid. We're good. <laughs> but i don't think i can reschedule them for another time now so uh, uh, today uh, it was today was the only days that they could do it we were supposed to have jake and james for today but i'm like no you know kai said doesn't don't have anybody wait, on. <laughs> wait no 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 we we can't say this because didn't doesn't james actually listen to, sometimes or he knows <laughs> like when we mention yeah him. so if he listens he knows everything. Uh, <laughs> he knows like <laughs> come on Please. I mean, I'm no. not joking. I mean, he was supposed to be here today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. But I'm like, Kahai specifically told me, don't bring guests today. Kahai Fergan. Oh, my Kapa gosh. Told, told me not Usu- to have guests today. Usually, when you say stuff like this, I'm like, no. But <laughs> last week, I did tell you not to, to get any guests. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it's all it's all good. But uh, yeah. I don't know. We we might have a guest next week. We might not have a guest next week. I I do have some friends that I'm looking at to kind of bring into the podcast and have a nice chat with them. Um, I don't know. Let us know if you guys like our guests and whatnot. Or if you guys just want us to answer questions, you're like, yeah, it's enough with these guys. Just answer our questions. Um, let us know. Give us some ideas. Give us some um, you know, give us some feedback on what you want to hear on Thursday Live Lesson. All right, everyone, have a great one. Stick around for one-on-one coaching. That happens in about 11 minutes here at Ukula Underground Plus. Have a great one. Aloha.